Good morning. This is the first part of my multi-part video recorded tutorial <laughs> on language modularization and uh, composition with MPS. And what you can see here is MPS. MPS is basically an IDE, so you can see the project view over there, an editor over here, and uh, a bunch of messages or uh, version control changes or whatever down there. Um, on the left side, the top level node is the so-called project. Within projects, we have solutions and languages. Languages, in this case within this folder, are basically meta stuff. So they define syntax, structure, type systems, and other generators, other language aspects. And solutions are, well, places where you use languages, so they're non-meta. I want to show you in this tutorial, or in this first part, um, basics about MPS, how it works and how it feels, before we then delve into the details of language composition in the subsequent parts. So on the right side you can see a very simple language. It's uh, the expression language and the playground language. The expression language basically defines only the expression part here. It's reusable. We're going to use it and reuse it later. And the playground language defines the abstraction of a variable, which is basically something that has a type a name and then it has an initialization expression. It's basically just a way uh, to uh, have a playground for using or playing with expressions. The first thing that you really need to understand about MPS is that it's a projectional editor. Projectional editor means there is no parsing going on. So what you see here looks textual and it feels textual, which is an important aspect, but it is projected from an abstract syntax tree. So instead of writing something in text, parsing it into a tree, and then working from there, every editor action directly creates objects on the AST. This is like in UML tools or graphical editors, where if you drag a class shape from the palette onto the canvas, you don't draw a bunch of pixels, and then you have a parser which parses these pixels and builds uh, an AST. Instead, the activity, the, the, the gesture of drag and dropping a class onto the canvas creates the object on the uh, on the AST in the tree, and then a rendering engine shows the class um, as, as a rectangle or whatever else. And in this case here, um, we project things textually. So to illustrate that, we can go to, defi to the definition of the variable. You can press, um, I can't see my keyboard here, you can press Control shift s at any time you're now at the definition of the variable concept right you can see it, it has a type and it has an expression and if you go to the editor tab you can see how the editor of a variable looks basically it's a horizontal list of stuff in the first cell it shows a, a constant a keyword var and then it introduces or it shows the type of the variable its name an equal sign another constant and the initialization expression. Now we can go here and change that to variable. Bull. Even with a space, uh, if you like. Uh, if you like. Right? For some reason I have the English keyboard going here. I'll switch it. So that should be a Y. And if I rebuild the language, which takes a second, and I then go back to our playground, you can now see the existing program looking differently. This is because um, the projection engine now has a new set of rules and projects the same uh, syntax tree, the same data, in in a different syntax. So uh, that is important to understand and that has all kinds of consequences. You can use um, other notations, you know, tables, diagrams in the upcoming version and um, so it's very flexible and, and you never have problems when composing languages and we're going to see that in the subsequent parts of the tutorial. So um, that's one thing I wanted to show. The other thing I wanted to show is the, the way you enter things. So we already said that things are a tree. So if I create a new variable, int new variable, and I enter the same uh, expression as here. I can do this two ways. The first I only do as a demo, nobody does it this way. So I can first enter a plus, which puts the plus concept at the root of the expression tree on the right side of the equal sign. And I can then enter a two. Well, I should do it the same way. So I would put the two here, 
And on the left side of the plus, uh, there needs to go a multiplication. And then we go a 12 here and a 3 here. So this is the same tree and because we've entered it top down, it's clear, we can actually illustrate that looking at this in the explorer, we can, it's clear that the plus thing here is at the top and then on the left side we have the times and on the right we have the number literal 2 and if we look into the times we can see the other two number literals. Now nobody wants to enter expressions uh, <laughs> along the tree, you really want to just type them. So that's what I'm going to do now. 12 times 3, I hope you can hear my keyboard, plus 2. So I've just typed it linearly as in any other uh, text editor and of course well, of course. <laughs> and it still has the same structure. So if you select along the tree, you can see that is at the bottom and then you get the plus. So my point here is MPS does a really good job with making the tree editing behave as much as possible as normal text editing. Nobody wants to edit trees along trees, you know, entering roots first. Traditionally, Projectional editors required you to edit along the tree, and that sucked, and that's why projectional editors had a really bad rap. MPS does a really good job in masking the fact that you're actually editing trees and not just text, and that makes it really usable, and that makes it feasible to do all the cool things that MPS can do without being annoyed by the fact that you have tree editing. I mean, it does take a couple of days, maybe two, um, to get used to some of the ways MPS works. I did an experiment with an MPS training after two days. People said, okay, it's a bit different, but it's by no means worse. It's it's fine, it works, it's good. Okay, so um, something else I wanted to show you. Um, if I assign um, DD, which is a double variable, you can go here, DD is double, then you can see that um, we get a type error because we cannot assign a double to an int. We could assign an int to a double, but we can't assign a double to an int. So MPS also comes with type system rules and uh, other aspects of language definition. You can define quick fixes, you can define refactorings, data flow analysis, other kinds of interesting things. Code generators, of course, transformations between languages. So let's take a brief look at how language definition works in MPS. You've already seen a little bit of it because the core idea is the so-called concept. A concept is basically... Uh, a meta class or an AST type, whatever you want to call it. And uh, as you can see here, the variable concept extends base concept, which is like the mother of all concepts, right? So that's like Java lang object. So it basically means nothing. It also implements iNamed concept. iNamed concept is something that contributes a name property and is treated specially. So whenever something is an instance is shown and it is implements iNamed concept, it automatically uses the name of that thing. Uh, to render it. Um, okay, so variables. What else do they have? A variable has a type, so it has a field called type, lowercase t, um, which contains a type object. And if we go to the type object and look at its hierarchy, we can see there is primitive types and struct types. Primitive types either boolean type, int type, or string type, double type. So this is basically a hierarchy of meta classes representing primitive types in our expression language that we've built here. Um, and our variable contains one of these guys. Our variable also contains an expression which acts as the initialization expression. So expression is something that is also interesting because if we look at its hierarchy, you can see it's very deep. Because expressions, the way expressions are built is that you have all kinds of, you know, if binary expressions, then you have binary arithmetic expressions, binary comparison expressions, you have the greater equals, you have the multiplication on the binary arithmetic and so on, if expression and so on. So um, expressions are built, or the, the way expressions are built is by having an abstract class expression and then below that you have all kinds of other things and using polymorphism you can uh, wherever an expression is expected you can enter any of the concrete subclasses as well so in that sense mps is just like oo where in oo you would have polymorphism you can replace a super type with an instance well wherever a super type is declared you can use an instance of a subtype you can do that on language level within mps that makes it powerful um, 
We've already seen the definition of the editor, right? Editors are defined using cells and uh, collections of cells. And in this case, I already said that keyword, type object, name, equal sign, and then the expression. And notice how we simply say, please embed the expression here. Um, and then expressions come with their own editors and they are used here. So it's very easy to uh, compose stuff. Uh, if the thing you compose into your own language comes with its own editor, that editor is just simply used and embedded and there is no composition issue. We can also take a look at the type system rules. Uh, basically, we declare a bunch of uh, inference rules for the concept variable. And the first one says that the type of the whole variable itself, right, one of those guys, is the type of whatever is in its type field. In other words, the type of the whole variable is that guy. So we can ask that guy for its type. There is a control shift T shortcut that uh, shows you types of things and the type of an int is an int, right? Types are their own types. I hope there isn't too much type in the sentence. <laughs> and if we select the whole thing, you can also see that the whole thing is an int. You can even um, debug the whole type calculation uh, logic, but we won't do that at this point. The other thing is that we express that the type of the variable must be a super type or the same type as the type of the expression that we enter. And, and that, that, that leads to the fact that um, you can um, see here, you have a, a double ddd 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 <laughs> equals 12. And if I make this an int, it also works. But if, if I assign uh, dd, to that int it does not work because now that one is the general type and that's a subtype and that doesn't work so this one needs to be the more general one this needs to be the special one just just like um, polymorphic uh, substitution um, now you might ask where is it specified that int is a subtype of double well we can take a look at the expressions language into the type system and there is a super type of int type rule which says that a super types parent type is double and that's what uh, establishes the type hierarchy. Okay. Um, well, maybe maybe one more thing because before we uh, shut down this part. Um, I said that there are actually two languages um, at play here. This guy, the variable, comes from the uh, playground language. Um, we can look at this guy in the project view. So it's in the playground. And the playground language defines a playground object which contains a bunch of bunch of variables, right? That's this, this guy, which contains a bunch of variables. The variable itself, as we've seen before, is part of the playground language. And the variable reference, which is this guy, or that guy, or that guy, uh, these are expressions that refer to other variables. They're also defined of the playground language, because unless you have variables, it makes no sense to be able to refer to variables. Um, so that's all done in the playground language. Now, the actual expression here that's used in our variable, that comes from the expression language. That is this language, where we define all kinds of expression things. And the combination happens by, if we go into the, sorry, that scrolls out of the video, <laughs> the menu is too big. If I go to the language properties, um, you can see that um, the playground language extends the expression language that makes all the expression languages language concepts available in the playground language and that's why we can simply embed sorry simply embed an expression right here so this is already the first instance of language composition the playground language extends the expression language and uh, adds a bunch of new concepts and we embed expressions in our variables but that's only a kind of glimpse and what's coming and at this point, I want to uh, finish with the first part and uh, get back to you in the next part with uh, introducing the entities language, which is the basis for our language uh, extension and composition experiments. Thanks for watching.